I'd like to welcome you to another edition of our Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection, and welcome back to a new week. Hope that you had a great weekend. Hope that uh, you were blessed by the service that we had this past Sunday. Um, it's really been a very packed week uh, for us last week, and so looking forward to this week and uh, recouping a little bit early in the week, um, as well as digging into the text of Scripture that we dealt with a week ago. So, if you have a Bible, I'd like to ask you to take it. Let's turn together to Luke chapter 12. And this week, we're going to be looking at verses 35 through 48. And the theme of the focus is being ready to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. So if you have a Bible, let's all take it together. Let's turn there and we'll begin reading in Luke chapter 12, verses 35 through 48. Here's what God's word says. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. And ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their Lord, when he will return for the wedding, from the wedding. Then he will come and knock, that they may open in unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily, I say unto you, he shall gird himself and make them to sit down at meat, and he will come forth and serve them. Fascinating text of scripture. We're actually going to look at more than just the section that I read to you this morning, but it is a lengthier portion of scripture, so we won't read all the verses each day. But first of all, I'd like to do what I like to do is give you a summary statement. I enjoy doing that uh, because I think it helps us get um, on the right track as we're getting started. So here's the summary. The following passage presents a series of teachings that call us to be ready for Christ's return by wire, why, wisely stewarding all that he has given us. The focus is, be ready. Jesus is coming soon. And so the argument of the passage is simple. Be ready for Christ's return. Now, in order for us to do that, we need to kind of work our way through, first of all, the context. And what we're going to see in these verses is that the context calls us to be ready. And we see that in verse number 40. Here's what it says. Be ye therefore ready. For the Lord, or the Son of Man, cometh at an hour that ye think not. Now, there are two pieces to that verse that I think should catch all of our attention. And the first piece is the word, therefore. What is the background of Christ's teaching? The word, therefore, is telling us that what Jesus is teaching is connected to something he's already taught. And that's what the therefore is there for. <laughs> it's connecting the two pieces. So the second question we want to answer is, well, what is he coming to do? It says, the Son of Man cometh. So, in order to answer those questions, I want to begin by thinking about the context of the book of Luke leading up to what is being stated in these verses that is the purpose or the reason behind the therefore. So, we cannot understand the answer to those two questions without a basic understanding of the preeminence of Christ's kingdom and how it is taught over and over and over again in the book of Luke. In fact, when we talk about the book of Luke, the word kingdom is used 45 times in the book. That's a lot. The book of Matthew actually uses more examples of the word kingdom, and it's a shorter book. So it's not just that this is uh, something that we need to understand to understand Luke. It's also an important piece in the gospel of Matthew. And so when we talk about some examples, I want you to get a feel for how this word is being used in the book. First example is found in Luke chapter 1, verses 32 to 33. And this is the announcement of Christ's birth. Here's what it says. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Now, when we read that verse, the announcement of Christ's birth to Mary by the angel, what we are seeing is a statement that is filled with messianic prophecies. He talks about him being the son of the highest. He talks about him ruling on the throne of his father David. It talks about him having a kingdom that will have no end. You see that the emphasis on Jesus reigning as a king is, is heavy in that text. A second, this was the focus of John and Christ and the other disciples preaching. Some examples of this are Luke chapter 4, verse 43. Jesus said, I must preach the kingdom of God 
to other cities, therefore thereof am I sent. In Luke chapter 18, verse 1, he says, He went through every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Luke 9, 2. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. The healing of the sick was a validation or verification that, in fact, this was a message from God. And it was following that, that prophetic, um, we could say that the, the, the way that, that the Jewish people would have understood prophecies coming with um, a prediction that would be fulfilled, that would verify. We see that in these verses. Luke chapter 11, verse 20. He says, If I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is come unto you. And we, we've heard the story of the blasphemy against the Spirit and how Jesus says that if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, that's an unforgivable sin. And this is where that statement was made. The point is that if you reject the verification of God on the message that's been given, and you attribute that to Satan, you've got nothing else that you can embrace in order to, uh, to, to see, to receive in order to embrace the Messiah. And so, again, you see this emphasis of kingdom, one kingdom against another. And then in Luke chapter 12, this is the text, the chapter that we're dealing with, verse 31, he says, Seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. What is the point? The point is, God cares about this thing called the kingdom and his rule. And so in chapter 12, 32, next verse, he says, Fear not, little flock, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Well, when we think about this issue of the kingdom, it reminds us of the fact that there is a kind of rule that is being talked about in the book of Luke, that is being anticipated, that was ultimately uh, fulfilled in Christ, is going to ultimately be fulfilled in Christ, is purchased, entrance into the kingdom is purchased through the finished work of Christ. And so there's some things to consider or to ponder. So how do we act on that this week? This is introduction. Well, the first thing I'll say is this. We've got to think more about what is going to be coming in the future than what is right there in front of us. A lot of us are living our lives in the moment without considering the direction in which things are going. Secondly, there's a promised kingdom, and we need to be anticipating this kingdom, looking forward to it, to the day that we will enjoy all the blessings that have been purchased for us in Christ. So I hope that this week you will join us as we talk extensively about this topic of the kingdom of God from the book of Luke chapter 12, and we will be challenged from God's word to be ready for Christ's return. Gives us some things to think about. I hope that you'll join us this week as we do that. And I also hope that you'll share these videos if they've been an encouragement to you so that they can be an encouragement to others. Have a blessed rest of your day. And Lord willing, we will meet again tomorrow. Bye now.